Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Sometimes the best way to find a living is to stay right where you are and study with UAS online. Career-specific distance programs from the University of Alaska Southeast are the fastest way to increase your earning power. We connect all over the world. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us here for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. On the uh, fire danger map, um, or actually on the watch warning advisory map, there's still a uh, flood advisory going here for the uh, Chena and Salsa and Tanana rivers. Uh, until or through tomorrow for local uh, flooding in these areas, uh, minor flooding, a lot of bankful rivers here through the central interior. And that continues for the next couple of days due to the rain earlier in the week and then the inch to inch and a half they've had more recently. And onto the fire danger map, uh, pretty well uh, gone here over the interior, except up over the uh, Yukon Flats area, uh, still some high fire danger there as well as Kodiak Island and a few spots here on the Kenai Peninsula, but uh, really kind of uh, couldn't draw it in really on this uh, scale of a map. So moving on to satellite imagery, here's the uh, moisture that brought the rain in across uh, South Central Alaska this morning, shifted into the Copper River Basin along the North Gulf Coast and toward Yakutat during the day today. And uh, this band here brought, uh, bringing a little bit of light stuff along the uh, northern southeast coast, otherwise mostly cloudy down that way. Some good clearing up to the north there across the north slope from the Brooks Range on out toward uh, portions of the Arctic coast, especially on the east side or on the west side where the east winds uh, blowing the clouds out to sea. And then back to the southwest here, a lot of moisture streaming northeastward there from the central Aleutians uh, right into the southwest coast and uh, extends all the way back down off the picture there. And then back to the west here, we've got upper level low dropping into the northwestern Bering Sea and uh, actually right in about that position. So that's pulling all that moisture northeastward and that'll be rolling on in later tonight and for tomorrow. But on today's uh, chart, here's the rain here over the Copper River Basin this afternoon where they had up to about half an inch of rain today over that area. Anywhere from uh, one to three tenths fell over south central Alaska, lighter amounts down to the south. And then up in the Tanana Valley, another wet day up there with uh, up to half an inch falling in some locations. Back, back toward uh, Toledo there, they had over an inch and a quarter, about 1.2 inches or so in the last 24 hours. Again, ending at uh, four o'clock this afternoon. And uh, even McGrath, Nikolai picking up some good rain showers and then that extended back to the west there with a lot of uh, IFR, fog, light rain, drizzle type of weather here from the Bering Strait down to St. Lawrence Island. Scattered showers just to the north there and then clearing out up over the north slope with some uh, fog on the eastern Arctic coast there. But uh, winds pretty gusty here up to uh, 20 to 30, some cases 35 miles an hour out of the east there along the west side. And uh, pretty uh, breezy too along the Yukon Delta coast, uh, Hooper Bay getting west winds gusting to 35 miles per hour. And uh, even over in McGrath, they had gusts up to 30 miles an hour today. And uh, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds blowing from uh, St. Michael here, Eastern Norton Sound, uh, Unalakleet on up to uh, about Caltag. And then here's the next system off to the Southwest. Uh, again, clouds here already in over with uh, some areas of light rain or sprinkles here this afternoon over the Yukon Delta coast. Uh, 
but the main rain area now spreading up across the Pervilofs, down across the eastern Aleutians, coming into the uh, Alaska Peninsula this afternoon. And uh, we'll see tonight that uh, pushes northeastward, the moisture with it does. There, get the right button. And uh, there. And the low center actually tracks up to uh, northern Cook Inlet. Uh, all this rain pushes in across the southwest coast there, right up into the Yukon Delta, southern Cuscombe Valley, down across Bristol Bay. Chance of rain there mainly along the western portions of Kodiak Island of occasional light rain with a band of uh, precipitation extending southwest there, keeping it wet over the eastern Aleutians, drying out back to the west. And then this band of moisture with uh, rain and showers continues right through the central interior there from the Seward Peninsula across the Tanana Valley all the way to the border again north of there. Partly cloudy skies to in some cases mostly clear, especially back to the uh, northwest with the gusty east winds here on the eastern Arctic coast. Less of that uh, down toward Kivalina. But uh, pretty dry up here for the most part, low clouds and fog on the eastern Arctic coast, central coast as well. Some of that uh, edging its way southward during the overnight hours. And then we've got showers, mostly uh, cloudy skies, showers here, mostly over Prince William Sound, Copper River Basin. So the rain tapering off uh, to some scattered showers and uh, periods of rain, fog there for the southeast coast. And then for tomorrow, this bulk of moisture just kind of gets pulled into the low center here. So it looks like uh, rain across just about all of southern Alaska. Uh, chance of rain is that front crosses Kodiak Island there. Again, heaviest amounts will be on the western side over toward Shelikoff Strait. And uh, kind of the first warm front sort of dissipates as it swings in. Another one develops here. So look for occasional rain, maybe fog, fog out along the coastline. Otherwise, inland areas, occasional rain all day long, North Gulf Coast, wet conditions, chance of an embedded thunderstorm, mostly up toward the mountains, probably no farther south than Chalitna, just a risk. A little bit better chance of some isolated thunderstorm activity back to the northwest, or there will probably be some more clearing and afternoon warming to trigger uh, some action in the taller clouds out that way. Otherwise, showers uh, upper Yukon Valley, eastern Brooks Range, sunny skies there, the western north slope out to the eastern or western Arctic coast with uh, again, gusty east winds, 15 to 30 miles an hour out along the coast there. Lighter winds off to the east, low clouds and fog all day there along the uh, Kaktovik area over toward uh, Prudhoe Bay. Northwest winds pretty brisk here, small craft advisories, uh, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, northwest uh, 25 or 20 gusts, maybe 35 miles an hour. And a lot of uh, low stuff, IFR backed up on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Out to the west, uh, Kind of a weak area, high pressure out over the western Aleutians with west-northwest flow at the surface. Uh, not all that strong or not strong at all, but uh, just a lot of low clouds, areas of fog, no big storms. Warm front well to the south staying down there. And then we'll uh, take a look at the first day of the weekend, Saturday, and that storm system pulls eastward. So it looks uh, pretty wet over the Copper River Basin, maybe changing over to showers late in the afternoon. South Central Alaska, Prince William Sound becoming mostly sunny, mostly sunny South Central Alaska all the way down to Kodiak Island. Those gusty east winds, so temperatures should rebound back into the 60s and 70s for Saturday in this area. Dry up over the uh, central interior, it looks like, with uh, probably some sunshine there over the Tanana Valley. Showers, scattered thunderstorms along the Alaska Range over into uh, the Toke, maybe in the Northway area. And that front through the panhandle, so rain changing to showers, but uh, another trough off the coast. And that'll probably swing on in on Saturday night and uh, during the day on Sunday for more precipitation there. And then we've got this system that's uh, slid down out of uh, the Russian Far East there into the interior. Actually, tomorrow night brings rain along the uh, west coast there. And that pushes inland and southward to almost Togiak Bay and definitely in across the Cuscombe Valley, right up to the Alaska Range by the late afternoon. And some scattered thunderstorms possible up toward the central Brooks Range. No change along the Arctic coast there. Easterly winds uh, probably picking up a little bit from what they uh, will be on Friday in that area, but back to the west here, probably maybe possibly a little bit lighter. And then for uh, Bering Sea, no change at all. Just maybe a bit more of a breeze here with that west-northwest flow continuing, but a little bit tighter gradient, light winds, IFR fog for the Aleutians. And uh, otherwise, uh, again, 
for temperatures across the southeast coast uh, this afternoon. Uh, 50s, upper 50s to uh, lower 60s there, 63 up at Skagway, 57 in the state capital this afternoon, Yakutat, 58 degrees, mid to upper 50s for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, as well as the Copper River Basin, but McCarthy just 50 degrees this afternoon at about uh, 2.30, and uh, warmer here where the sun broke out over Cook Inlet uh, up into the Sisitna Valley, that's uh, 74 at Nanelchik. That was matched at Kaliganek with some sun. They pushed up to 74 degrees as well. Uh, offshore winds northwest there. Kodiak 72, even 70 degrees over toward, uh, let's see, that's uh, Chignik 70 degrees. 72 in Squintna, 68 Talkeetna, mid to upper 50s there, central interior Tanana Valley. And then north of there, a little more sunshine. So we got into uh, the lower to mid 60s here, both at uh, Fort Yukon. Bettles and Selowick, 63 degrees, 61, Kivalina and uh, Kelly pushed up near 70 with uh, some sunshine there. 58, Umiat Airfield, clear skies there at uh, Atasuk with 57 degrees. 40s on the Arctic coast there, central and east side, just 36 degrees over at Kaktovik. And out in the Bering Strait, temperatures ranged from uh, Wales with 53 to 48 at Savunga. Lower 50s here for the Pribilofs, 49 out at Chimia. Otherwise, uh, mid to upper 50s for Central Aleutians. Uh, Nikolsky up to 58, 66 degrees there at Unalaska. And Sand Point also up to 66. Uh, cooler 50s at Cold Bay, Falls Pass, and Nelson Lagoon. For the lows tonight, uh, not much change there. Mid 50s for the Peninsula, upper 40s for the Aleutians and uh, lower 30s here along the Arctic coast, uh, mostly on the east side, warmer to the west, 40s and 50s there over the northwest part of the state, otherwise everyone else in the 50s, locally into the upper 40s and the southeast coast, all in the mid 50s. Highs for tomorrow, not really uh, rebounding much here, mostly 55 to 60 in that range for the Panhandle. Uh, lower to mid 60s here for uh, south central Alaska, with again a lot of clouds and uh, Quite a few areas of rain. Uh, cooler here, Kodiak Island, lower 60s tomorrow, upper 50s for the peninsula. Pretty mild, again, pushing up towards 70 degrees over the northwest valleys, and that'll extend eastward to the Yukon Flats. Flying weather tomorrow morning, central eastern Arctic coast looks IFR, VFR across the Brooks Range into the northeast interior here with a band of marginal or of IFR from the eastern border right out across the Seward Peninsula to St. Lawrence Island. Areas of IFR out over the Bering Sea as well as the uh, northern panhandle and along the Canadian border for tomorrow afternoon. That breaks up a little persisting here in the north, maybe a little bit off the coast, marginal VFR back into Prince William Sound and uh, VFR south, southern or south central Alaska back out to the coast and this area improving considerably over the interior but still some marginal VFR safe from roughly Tanana back out across the uh, Norton Sound area and just some marginal VFR tomorrow afternoon along the eastern Arctic coast. Passes shaping up like this, uh, Anatuvik VFR, same forecast for Adigan, no problems there. Clear skies, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR and uh, rainy, also marginal, all three passes, lowest conditions will be on the western approaches. And for windy, marginal VFR. Isabel, marginal on the north side, as well as Mentasta, northern entrance, marginal, looks to be uh, mostly VFR down across the basin. And for Tanita, marginal VFR, Portage, same forecast, Chilkoot and White, IFR occasionally throughout the entire day. And the freezing levels here, uh, colder pool, still about 8,000 feet, so not cold at all, really. Uh, with that upper trough as it pulls southeastward here toward the Pribilofs, and then 14,000 feet right up over Kodiak Island, dropping back to 8,000 feet over the uh, Fairbanks area. And with uh, icing areas of, in this big shaded area here, uh, mostly above 7,000 feet from the eastern interior, all the way down along the frontal boundary there, along and north of the Alaska Peninsula, tapering off back toward the eastern Aleutians, and some of that slipping on into the northern and central southeast coast. And taking a look at the uh, upper wind flow, again, continued westerly flow over all of mainland Alaska, a little more northwesterly out here over the Bering Sea, but here's that trough uh, pulling southeastward, 
and uh, tomorrow night and then Thursday it'll end up in the Gulf of Alaska. So this northwest flow off the pen handle that'll turn southwesterly and put you right back into a good rain pattern probably well at least uh, maybe right through the weekend and uh, higher pressure way out to the west. And for 9,000 feet, uh, weak low here over southern Alaska. Very light flow, though, over the interior. Uh, maybe up to 15 knots here back to the southwest coast. But uh, 30 knots across the peninsula there, southern Kodiak Island. But the main band just to the south, still pretty brisk over the eastern Aleutians. Not too bad wind-wise here, eastern Arctic coast. Southwest, for the most part, uh, up to 20 for the Panhandle, but only 15 knots there at 3,000 feet. And westerly winds here across the Barrens on up into uh, south central Alaska. Pretty light, mostly from the west, a stronger wind band again, just along southern Kodiak Island to the south, kind of coming back up across the peninsula, out to the eastern Aleutians and northwesterly 20 to 25 across the Bering Sea. Northeast, 20 knots there, western Arctic coast turning northerly through the, state, uh, the strait and high pressure out over the southwest bearing and the western Aleutians making for pretty good conditions out that way. And for turbulence, uh, occasional moderate chop, uh, northwesterly mechanical turbulence, those surface winds uh, there for the really the southern Aleutian range and the peninsula and southeastward, some of that clipping southern Kodiak Island and then again with those uh, gusty surface winds along the western Arctic coast, occasional light to isolate moderate chop below about 4,000 feet especially for the smaller aircraft. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the ice edge and the marine forecasts. Zubinesha what? Zubinalja who? Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And we're here to help you. Be sure you know what you're seeing in the night sky when you look up. Once again, my friends, it's Zubinesh Shamali and Zubinalja Nubi time. So loosen up your tongue and fasten your cosmic seatbelts. Because this year, they're joined by two bright planets. So let's go outside and find them. Okay, we've got our sky set up for any night during the next couple of weeks, just after it gets dark out. And if you look south, you'll see a giant fish hook shaped constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion, followed by the teapot shaped portion of Sagittarius. But up and to the right of the fish hook of Scorpius, you'll see two semi bright stars with some of the strangest sounding names in the heavens Zubin es Shamali and Zubin el Janubi. Now in Arabic, Zubin es Shamali means the Northern Claw, while Zubin el Janubi means the Southern Claw. And about 3,000 years ago, they were the claws of the scorpion. But then Julius Caesar and his cronies came along and lopped them off and renamed them Libra the Scales for the symbol of Roman justice. Which I'm sure led many an ancient stargazer to mutter, there ought to be a law. At any rate, these two stars are wonderful, and although they appear visually to be the same brightness from Earth, actually they are very, very different. For instance, Zubin el Janubi is about 65 light years away from our planet Earth, and shines 25 times brighter than our own Sun, and is approaching us at the incredible speed of 6 miles per second. And upon closer examination, we also find that Zubin el Janubi is not just one, not even two, but three stars, two of them, so close together that they orbit each other once every 20 days. On the other hand, Zubin es Shamali, the northern claw, is over twice as far away as Zubin el Janubi, being 140 light years distant. And although it appears the same brightness as its claw companion, it isn't. Four, it is six times brighter than Zubin el Janubi, which means that it's over 150 times brighter than our sun. And it's speeding toward us four times faster than Zubin el Janubi, at a rate of 21 miles per second. Furthermore, Zubin es Shamali is also at the center of a centuries old debate. You see, over 2,000 years ago, it was listed as the brightest of all the stars of the Scorpion, even brighter than Antares. A few centuries later, however, the great astronomer Ptolemy described Antares as equal to Zubin es Shamali in brightness. But today, Antares appears five times brighter. 
Has Zubinesh Shamali dimmed over the past 2,000 years? Or, conversely, has Antares gotten much, much brighter? At any rate, it's always fun to try to pronounce these two tongue twisters of summer. Absolutely. Now let's see what the planets are doing this week. Okay, we have our skies set for just after sunset this week, and you're going to have a great opportunity to watch the planet Mars wander closer and closer to the ring planet Saturn and the stars of Scorpius the Scorpion. But wait, there's more. On the night of August 11th, a waxing gibbous moon will cozy up with Mars, Saturn, and Antares to form a cosmic quadrilateral that you won't soon forget. Here's where Mars will be starting on July the 24th. Then we jump ahead one week at a time to July 31st, then August 7th when Mars passes right below the star to Shuba, and then August 11th when the moon joins the party. And if you haven't had a chance to look at Saturn recently, this month is a great time to find it because it will be right next to the star Antares, the rival of Mars. Speaking of which, check out the location of Mars on August 25th this year. Hey, that's my birthday! And Mars is right next to Antares! Woohoo! Happy birthday, James! Now, don't get too carried away. Save your sweet moves for next month. Alrighty. We'll talk more about planetary conjunctions and all sorts of other fun things in August. But in the meantime, get outside and watch the Wanderers do what they do best. And don't forget to do some Zubin el and Zubin el Janubine while you're at it. It's easy to do if you remember to keep, keep looking, looking up. Uh, multi-year ice here holding or uh, right in close to the coastline in fact uh, on the coastline in places here to the east and then on back up toward Barrow and then those easterly winds uh, keeping this area uh, from making landfall at all so that's going to stay back uh, off the coast there and really not much change in what you see here will take place over the next two or three days and for the southeast coast, uh, south winds along the outer coastline there in these marine areas, uh, 20 knots, uh, 5 foot seas, pretty uh, general pattern there. South 20 and 4 foot seas for Clarence Strait. And then turning southwest in Stevens Passage, small craft advisories as those southerly winds increase to 25 knots for northern Lynn Canal. And Saturday, no change there for the canal, but uh, quite a bit windier here for the central and southern inside waters with Gale warnings out for Clarence Strait as those winds kick up to 35 knots with higher gusts. Seas though uh, no more than 7 feet and small craft advisories now also for uh, Stevens Passage. Small crafts down there on the extreme south coast, otherwise south to southwest at about 20 with 9 foot seas. Prince William Sound variable to southeast at 10 tomorrow. Light winds also for northern Cook Inlet picking up about 15 knots south of the Forelands. Then small craft advisories Westerlies for the uh, Kamishak Bay area turning southwest 25 knots or uh, Shelikoff Strait and then small craft advisories for westerlies at 30 knots strongest winds there in the southern portion of that marine zone south to southwest just 15 for the North Gulf Coast. Then on Saturday uh, no change here except uh, increasing the winds uh, the stronger winds will be a little farther north so we've got west 30 there for Kamishak Bay turning northwest across the Barrens. Small crafts continue, but more westerly for Shelikoff Strait and uh, northwest for the western Arctic coast and then northeast there with that low center just to the south, but only at about 15 knots. Continued light winds for Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet. Bristol Bay, northwest 25, westerly 25 here on the uh, Pacific side of the peninsula, Bering Sea side of the peninsula. The uh, strongest winds on the Pacific side there from Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak. And then those drop off here, the peninsula for Saturday, west 20 knots with six to seven foot seas, small craft advisories for Bristol Bay, and also from Sitkanak to uh, Castle Cape. For the eastern Aleutians, 15 to 25 knot westerlies for tomorrow. Next ends right here across the uh, Adak Atka area, then lighter, actually probably 10 to 15 here out to the west. And uh, no change really, southwest 15, west of Adak to Shimia, westerlies 15 there for the central Aleutian, so staying light, and 15 to 20 knot winds as you head eastward toward Unalaska. For the southwest coast, uh, west and northwest, 20 to 25 knots, strongest south of Nunavak Island, 
20 knot westerly, St. Lawrence Island into the northern Bering Sea and down across the Perbolofs with 6 to 8 foot seas. And then the outlook for Saturday, small craft advisories here for much of the Bering Sea from the Perbolofs uh, all the way into the coast, 25 knots out of the west, sea 7 to 8 foot, and St. Lawrence Island west 20. For the Arctic coast there on the east side, uh, fairly light winds northeasterlies, 10 to 15 knots for both the central and eastern coast with uh, small craft advisories here on the west side, five foot seas, whales to Cape uh, Thompson northwest at 15. Looking ahead to Saturday, got uh, 25 knot winds here for the western coast and then from Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales with uh, seas running five to seven feet and also Brisk wind advisory, small crafts there for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast up to 25 knots. And looking at uh, tonight again, again, moisture streaming quite rapidly northeastward with uh, weak low setting up here over northern Cook Inlet, but chances for rain increase there, mainly western Kodiak Island, extending back across the entire southwest coast, and then a band of moisture along that frontal boundary for the peninsula and the eastern Aleutians, and looks like uh, kind of cloudy and wet there for the southeast coast. Moisture continues here with that uh, flood advisory and uh, over the central interior areas, but uh, look for rain from the eastern border again, areas of all the way back to the Seward Peninsula staying fair to the north. And we'll see uh, this low center doesn't move much, but it tends to pull all this moisture right in across southern Alaska. So periods of rain tapering off back toward the coast tomorrow, but uh, pretty wet conditions right across uh, the North Gulf Coast and increasing again over the Copper River Basin, wet for the Panhandle as that warm front approaches. And then once this cold front passes Kodiak Island, uh, Saturday's looking pretty good with uh, sunny mild conditions right up across South Central Alaska, back into the 60s and 70s. More rain dropping into the Northwest right up to the Alaska Range and rain changing to showers for the Panhandle. Well, that's a look at the weather for today. See you again tomorrow at 530. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.